Radio Saltire, broadcasting to East Lothian and the world with Jenna Coburn. Hello, folks. Welcome to Jenna's Jamboree with me, Jenna Coburn. And for the next two hours, I'll be playing a picky mix, a variety pack, a potpourri of tunes from a specific era right here on Radio Saltire. I also have some community news and if you saw on social media, my show today is dedicated to 80s movies and TV shows. So much happened at the movies in the 1980s. The blockbuster franchise, Indy Jones and Star Wars, was born. The romantic comedy entered its golden age and the angsty teen movie became a genre all its own. It was the dedicated that gave us the de- Oh my god. This is just too funny. It was the decade that gave us killer robots, homesick ex- extraterrestrials, raging bulls, road warriors, optical illusion ghosts, <laughs> and more dystopian visions of the future that you could shake a time travelling DeLorean at. So, to celebrate that magical decade, I will only be playing songs from 80s movies and TV shows or TV shows that are set in the 80s. You'll know what I mean later in the show. There's one TV show that dropped the first part of their season 4 last Friday on Netflix. You know what one I'm talking about. Anyhow, I also have some 80s movie facts and a puzzler. You know it. This week's conundrum is called Guess the 80s Movies. I have a mashup or a soundbite, if you will, of five different scenes from five different movies from the 80s. Can you guess what movies they are? Here it is. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Is there something wrong? Yes, ma'am. The data on the MIG is inaccurate. How's that, Lieutenant? Well, I just happened to see a MIG-28... We... Do... we... Sorry, yes. We happened to see a MIG-28 do a 4G negative dive. Where did you see this? That's classified. It's what? It's classified? I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad thing. What do you mean, bad? Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. All right, that's bad. Okay. All right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. Go there, you get that door away from me! Go join your friends, you wiggles! Hey, you go! That is frightful. Dum da dum, delightful. <sighs> For the love. Hey, Lincoln 30 to dispatch. 8030, go ahead. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. Everything here is okay. Over. But nobody has no place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. What? It's me. It's Josh. Coach Bob! No, it's you know what movies those scenes are from all will be revealed at the end of the show right it's friday it's almost the weekend time to get this jamboree started with huey lewis and the news back in time now i think it's fair to say we know what film that's from that is from back to the future fun fact 
believe it or not, Disney rejected the script for Back to the Future because of the incestuous storyline involving Marty McFly's mother falling in love with him. <laughs> Random okie dokie. What other Back to the Future facts do I have? Um, Doc Brown was supposed to have a pet chimpanzee and not a dog. Okie dokie. <laughs> The iconic DeLorean time machine was originally envisioned as a time travel chamber that resembled a fridge. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh, this is a sore one. Eric Stoltz was originally cast as Marty when the producer's first choice, Michael J. Fox, was unavailable due to filming commitments. So Eric had filmed five weeks worth of footage before he was let go and replaced by M.G. Fox. Ooh. Ouch, sore one. Just a few factoids there regarding Back to the Future. I have more 80s movie facts coming up later in the show. Right, time for another... I'm going to stick with the science fiction genre here. And this is... I maybe played it last week if you were listening. This is Queen Flash. Jenna Coburn on Radio Salter. 106.7 and 107.2 FM. Welcome back to Jenna's Jamboree here on Radio Soltar, the heart and soul of East Lothian. Simple minds with don't you forget about me there. That was the 1985 soundtrack to the film The Breakfast Club. Now today I'm dedicating my show to the TV shows and movies that brought us the likes of Chunk and Sloth, Egon Ray and Venkman and Zoltar. Bonus points if you know who and what they are. We can be BFFs. <laughs> But let me tell you about how I came up with this week's theme. I touched on this subject at the top of the show. So a certain TV show released part one of their season four last Friday on Netflix. And (laughs) you wouldn't be wrong to assume that I have indeed watched them all already. I have binged all seven episodes. (laughs) And I'm climbing the walls later on the rest of season four, to be honest. But I'll just have to wait till the 1st of July for that. I'm talking about Stranger Things. And there's one song in particular that is featured heavily in this season, so far. (laughs) If you've seen it, and then you know what I'm talking about. This song was originally released in 1985, and because it was featured so heavily in Stranger Things, this song has gone viral again. (laughs) It's now not only back in the streaming charts, but it is sitting in pole position, numero uno in the iTunes and the UK Spotify singles chart. The official singles chart isn't released for another few hours yet, but I bet it's in the top 10. The song is Kate Bush running up the hill. Here it is. I have to say, that song is growing on me. That was the fab tune from Kate Bush with Run Up That Hill. But did you know that that song was on the official soundtrack album for the 2012 Summer Olympics closing ceremony? Very good, eh? Troops, you are listening to Jenna's Jamboree with me, Jenna Coburn, live on Radio Salter. And that was Kenny Logan's Footloose from the 1984 film Footloose. But did you know that when Kevin Bacon goes to weddings, he actually pays the DJ not to play the song? <laughs> Oh dear, he must be well and truly sick of the song, bless him. Folks, if you've just tuned in, today's show is nothing but soundtracks from the 80s, films and TV shows or TV shows that are set in the 80s, nothing else. Just a tribute to the decade that brought us the weird and wonderful to our TV boxes. At the top of the show, I mentioned that I have a puzzler for you. It's a soundbite of five different scenes from five different movies. And I want to know what you think those movies are. Here's the soundbite. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Is there something wrong? Yes, ma'am. The data on the MIG is inaccurate. How's that, Lieutenant? Well, I just happened to see a MIG-28... We... we, Sorry. We happened to see a MIG-28 do a 4G negative dive. Where did you see this? That's classified. It's what? It's classified? I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad thing. What do you mean, bad? Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. 
All right, that's bad. Okay. All right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. Oh, Sam, you get that door away from me! Go join your friends, you wiggles! Are you gone? Sad is frightful. Dum da dum, delightful. <sighs> For the love. Hey, Lincoln 30 to dispatch. 8030, go ahead. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. Everything here is okay. Over. But nobody has no place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. What? It's me. It's Josh. Coach Bob! No, 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 no. you know the answers then head over to the Radio Solitaire Facebook page and comment on my post or send me a wee text on 07821 now it was in 1984 when we were introduced to the man the myth the legend Mr Miyagi <laughs> hashtag wax on wax off but did you know that Ralph Macchio that's Danya's son almost missed out on the role because it was offered to Charlie Sheen but luckily he turned it down and when Macchio filmed Karate Kid he was actually 22 and not a teenager as his baby face would suggest now the song I'm about to play was originally made for Karate Kid but ended up getting used two years earlier in a little feature called um, what was that again? what was it? was it Rocky 3? so Karate Kid never used Eye of the Tiger. Folks, it's me, Jenna Coburn, and you're listening to Jenna's Jamboree live on Radio Salter. Who wants to hear some more factoids about 80s movies? Fab, because I've got loads like this one. Steven Spielberg's original concept for E.T. was the story of a family that terrorised... A family that was terrorised in their home by five aliens. (laughs) That's a bit much. The sweeties that E.T. eats were supposed to be M&M's, but Mars, who manufactures M&M's, turns down Spielberg's request to use them in the film. Spielberg then approached Hershey's, who obviously allowed them to use Reese's Pieces, which of course had its sales skyrocket after the release of the film. Silly Mars, you missed out there. (laughs) Um, What else have we got? Oh, did you know that Harrison Ford's Cameo as Elliot's principal was cut from the film. I did not know that he was even in that. Wow. Um, what else? What else? What else? Most of the f- oh, right, okay. Most of the full body puppetry in E.T. was performed by a two foot ten inch tall stuntman, but the scenes in the kitchen were done using a twelve year old boy who was born without legs, but was an expert on walk walking on his hands. Oh my goodness. Now here's some random facts about other movies from the 80s. The spec script from the 1989 film Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, you know, excellent dude and all that nonsense. <laughs> well, that the spec script had them using a time travelling van and going back to get Hitler, <laughs> who was then replaced with Napoleon in the actual film because, well, it was Hitler. <laughs> Oh dear. In the Terminator, Arnold Schwarzenegger wanted to change the iconic line, I'll be back, to I will be back, because he was having trouble pronouncing Al. 
but director James Cameron obviously refused to change. I mean, how rubbish would it have been if he said, I will be back? I <laughs> just can't even picture that. <laughs> what else? What else? Oh, this one. Jack Nicholson's infamous line in The Shining, Here's Johnny, was completely improvised. And you know what else was improvised? Well, 9% of it was Michael Keaton's lines as Beetlejuice. Now, there are rumours going around that there may be a Beetlejuice 2 on the horizon and that the man of the month, Johnny Depp, may be involved somewhat. Now, that would be awesome if it was true. That would be awesome. Right, that'll do for now. Here's the soundtrack from the 1987 film The Lost Boys. It is in excess Jimmy Barnes' Good Times. Now, back to talking about 80s movies and their soundtracks like that one. That was Glenn Frey, The Heat Is On, from the 1984 film Beverly Hills Cop. I have a few more factoids for you, like this one. Both Mickey Rourke and Sylvester Stallone turned down the role of Axel Foley in Beverly Hills Cop because they didn't like the humour in the script. Sylvester Stallone rewrote the script to be more action-packed and the studio and producers didn't like his version, so they moved on. (laughs) To Eddie Murphy, of course. Now, what else have I got? Beverly Hills Cop wasn't only the highest grossing film of 1984, it was also the highest gross in R-rated movie, so that's a 15 certificate to us Brits. So it was the highest gross in R-rated movie of all time until The Matrix Reloaded kicked it off top spot in 2003. That is one franchise I cannot get my head around. No matter how many times I try to watch it, I just can't follow and understand The Matrix. Right, I'm going to wait to see if there's a glitch in The Matrix, because that's a thing, eh? That's, that's a thing, so... Cue you, my friends! Jenna here, and this is Jenna's Jamboree live on Radio Salter. Before I delve into more 80s film factoids, I have a puzzler. Here's a soundbite of five different scenes from five different movies, but what are they? Have a listen. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Is there something wrong? Yes, ma'am. The data on the MIG is inaccurate. How's that, Lieutenant? Well, I just happened to see a MIG-28. We do. Sorry, yes. We happened to see a MiG-28 do a 4G negative dive. Where did you see this? That's classified. It's what? It's classified? I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad thing. What do you mean, bad? Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. All right, that's bad. Okay. All right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. Oh, there you get that door away from me! Go join your friends, you wiggles! Oh, you go! That is frightful. Dum da dum, delightful. <sighs> For the love. Hey, Lincoln 30 to dispatch. 8 on 30, go ahead. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. Everything here is okay. Over. But nobody has no place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. What? It's me. It's Josh. Coach Bob! <laughs> I love that. 
Okay, so I played the Blues Brothers just after the ads there. Now, I think it's fair to say we know who played the Blues Brothers. It was Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. But did you know that Dan Aykroyd originally wrote Ghostbusters as a movie that would be that would have starred him and John Belushi as ghost hunters in space? And it was also to take place in the future. Now, the director told Aykroyd that the film would work better if it took place in present day and in a big city. And I think he was right. <laughs> the only concept that didn't change from the original concept of the film was the Marshmallow Man. Awesome. Also, Aykroyd was inspired to write Ghostbusters due to his great-granddad, his granddad and his dad all had a huge interest in the paranormal. Did you know that John Belushi was meant to play the role of Peter Venkman but actually died before production had started? Oh, what a shame. They did, however, pay tribute to Belushi by basing the character of Slimer on him. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. (laughs) Talking of wee creepy things, right? Did you know that in the early drafts of Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, Yoda was named Buffy? (laughs) Was he a vampire slayer as well, was he? (laughs) Sticking with wee yodes, he originally wasn't intended to appear in Star Wars Return of the Jedi, but George Lucas included the character so that he could confirm the fact that Darth Vader really was Luke's father. I'm not a fan of Star Wars franchise, I have to say that. It's another Matrix situation for me. Just no my cup of tea. You are listening to Jenna's Jambri on Radio Saltar today. And with me, Jenna Coburn. And today's show is nothing but 80s soundtracks. So 80s songs, 80s movie facts, 80s movie puzzler, all from the 1980s. And that was Hugh Lewis in the News with Working For A Living from one of my fave 80s movies, Big, starring Tom Hanks. Another of my all-time favourites is, well, let me just tell you that I consider myself to be an acquaintance of Mikey, Mouth, Chunk and Data. I am a Goonie. And I wear the badge proudly. But did you know that during the filming of the Goonies, Jeff Cohen, so that's Chunk, came down with chicken pox and he was so scared that he was going to be replaced that he never told anyone and turned up on set sick. And it's apparently his chicken pox are visible during the iconic truffle shuffle scene. Oh, he's a lucky boy. I'm going to have to go back and have a look now just to see if I can see any chicken pox. <laughs> Another Goonies factoid is the pirate ship was real. The director didn't allow the cast to see it in advance in order to capture their genuine reactions during filming. That ship was really cool though. Oh, and I forgot to mention that, yes, you know what's coming, I conducted a few polls on the socials. I wanted to know how the peoples would rate certain movies from the 80s. So I simply asked the kingdom of social media... Which 80s movie is better? Die Hard or Lethal Weapon? And 69% said Die Hard. I also asked Lost Boys or The Goonies. And I have to agree, like I've already mentioned, but massively 83% said The Goonies. Yes. I also asked Big or Ferris Bueller's Day Off? And 60% said Big. And lastly... I asked, Ghostbusters or Beetlejuice? And 68% said Ghostbusters. And I am in shock with that one. All of them are fab, but I'm a die-hard big Beetlejuice Goonies fan. (laughs) Guys, welcome back to Jenna's Jambree with me, Jenna Coburn, live on Radio Saltar. If you've just tuned in, I'm I'm hoping not. (laughs) Today's show has been dedicated to the movies and TV shows that's graced our screens back in the 1980s. And those select few that are out now, but set in the 80s. What a belter of a decade for entertainment. Even though I was born at the tail end of the 80s, it's by far my favourite decade for movies and music. Oakley Doakley, who managed to guess the movies? Here's the sound bite again. Excuse me, Lieutenant. Is there something wrong? Yes, ma'am. The data on the MIG is inaccurate. How's that, Lieutenant? Well, I just happened to see a MiG-28... We... Do... we... Sorry, Chris. We happened to see a MiG-28 do a 4G negative dive. Where did you see this? That's classified. It's what? It's classified. 
I could tell you, but then I'd have to kill you. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Why? It would be bad. I'm fuzzy on the whole good-bad thing. What do you mean, bad? Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total protonic reversal. All right, that's bad. Okay. All right, important safety tip. Thanks, Egon. Oh, hey, you get that door away from me! Go join your friends, you wiggles! Hey, you go! Sad is frightful. Dum da dum, delightful. <sighs> For the love. Hey, Lincoln 30 to dispatch. 8030, go ahead. Yeah, that's a wild goose chase over here at Nakatomi Plaza. Everything here is okay. Over. But nobody has no place to go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. What? It's me. It's Josh. Coach Bob! No, that's where we were. Space goes down, down, baby, down, down the roller goes Sweet, sweet, baby, sweet, sweet, don't let me go. Shimmy, shimmy, cocoa bar, shimmy, shimmy, rock. Shimmy, shimmy, cocoa bar, shimmy, shimmy, rock. I met a girlfriend, a trisket. She said a trisket, a biscuit, ice cream, soda, but for now, I'm top. Ooh, Shalina, walking down the street, ten times a week. I met it, I said it, I stole my mama's credit. I'm cool, I'm hot, suck you in the stomach three more times. I love that. Every time I hear it, I just keep loving that. Well, did you get it? Did you get all the answers? I can reveal that the 80s movies are in order. Top Gun, and that was Maverick basically showing up Charlie while she was instructing the rest of the class. The second one was Ghostbusters. Egon is educating Ray and Venkman whilst ghost hunting in the hotel looking for Slimer. The third one is The Goonies. That is basically... Chunk and Sloth coming to the rescue. <laughs> the fourth one is Die Hard. And that was John McClane trying to get Sergeant Al Powell's attention. And the last one was Big. That was Josh trying to prove he was him to his best friend, Billy. <laughs> I love that rap. Love it. Tom Hanks can still perform that if you go on a YouTube and... Um, type in, what is it, Graham Norton he was on that and he performed it, brilliant word for word anyway, there we go well done to everyone who guessed correctly, pat on the back for you guys bragging rights for days I've said it before and I'll say it again the 80s movies are something else I never managed to squeeze in every film from the 80s though, I'd be here for weeks if I did, but thanks so much for joining me here on Radio Salter I hope you've enjoyed today's show you know I have I'll be back next week with something completely different because no two shows are the same with me, but I can guarantee it's going to be totally random and filled with great tunes and bad banter. <laughs> Catch you next week. Bye!